Hello everyone and welcome to the release version of Mars Horizon which is due to be released on November 17th. I've been given this copy by the developers having previously uh, taken a look at the beta and the demo versions. So I've done some playing around with the game so far and I feel like I'm familiar with the basics. The gameplay isn't particularly complicated. I think it is targeting somebody somewhat younger than me. I would estimate teenager or younger. Um, I can already see the gameplay flow and it, yeah, it, it's a fairly straightforward game, a casual game, I would say. And But it has the promise to introduce people to certain hardware. Uh, and my hope is that if somebody's been playing something like Kerbal Space Program or somebody's interested in space flight in general, that when they play this game, they'll learn about the systems that exist and will then be able to search for them uh, if they make the transition between stock Kerbal to realism overall, for instance. They'll know what the stages are that they should be looking for in the rather voluminous part list in Kerbal Space Program with Realism Overhaul. So, um, yeah, or if they are just interested in spaceflight, they'll know what kind of things to look for, like the Vanguard Rocket, Able Stage, those kinds of things, Sputnik, Vostok. So they're introducing, uh, this game is introducing them to those kinds of things. And so for this video, what I want to do is not simply do a gameplay video. We can do more of those later on. What I want to do is take a look at the tech trees of the various factions. I previously saw the US and the Soviet one. And I want to take a look at the other ones to see what kind of parts uh, people get introduced to early on and whether certain things might be missing. Like for the Soviet slash Russia one, I noted that some of the upper stages that you would expect to see uh, were not present. And so we'll talk about that and I'll talk about the hardware because I'm most knowledgeable about the hardware. Uh, as far as alternate history is concerned, I personally feel that all alternate histories are nonsense anyway, so it doesn't matter to me. Like the previous playthrough I had, uh, I was playing as the Soviet Union and China beat me uh, to making the first uh, lunar probe. Obviously that did not happen in real life, but then it is an alternate history thing. You are playing around with it. It's not supposed to be real life. Otherwise, if it was just doing what exactly what actually happened, it'd be no fun. Uh, so, yeah. And frankly, I don't see that as any particularly different than uh, alternate history that says that the Soviets land on the moon first or an alternate history where um, we decided to go to Mars instead of make the space shuttle. All of that's the same to me. So, uh, let's take a look at ESSA. And let's take a look at the hardware. So, uh, I'll go with Pioneer. Let's just uh, proceed. I want to take a look at the tech tree. And we'll talk about what it has there. So, we have a test launch artificial satellite. Uh, well, the payload is uh, SRO 2 b um, I don't actually know what SRO 2 b is. I'm surprised they don't, didn't just go with asterisks. So SRO 2 b uh, is also known as IRIS or IRIS-2 and this is an astrophysical spin stabilized research satellite. This is from Wikipedia and this was from 1968. So um, I really think that they should go with asterisk, asterisk instead. First of all, it's got uh, a, a famous name and uh, it was launched in 1965. So it was actually launched three years before this SRO 2 b and it's more of a Sputnik kind of thing. It's not a real research satellite. SRO-2B is a proper research satellite able to do science and all. Uh, but then Sputnik wasn't really one. So um, Lunar Orbit Mission. It's interesting that they have Pioneer. But uh, Pioneer was a US probe. And it was a lunar probe. So it's correct in its position. Um, there might be a uh, ESA lunar probe that they could use, but there's not a, a something as famous as Pioneer, so I'll pass on that. Eden. I don't know uh, what Eden is, or if it's a real thing or not, so... Here we've got Payload Mercury. Now, they could have used Hermes uh, for a human in space. That was a proposed system, and might be more interesting for ESA. 
So the Hermes system was actually a space plane. So it might seem uh, too advanced for this stage, but the US was also looking into space planes at this point and maybe a dinosaur could have happened in theory if they weren't racing the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union also had uh, potential space planes that they wanted to use and were proposed, but they didn't have the budget for, uh, so they went with Vostok instead. But uh, actually Hermes looks a lot like the Soviet uh, style one, though it, it looks like a Soviet style one on the front end and a dinosaur on the back end. But basically all of all of the um, space plane versions of the early human in space capsules uh, look va vaguely the same. And so the Hermes was supposed to be from 1975, but that it's a possibility here just so that you don't have an American system in the midst of a uh, European tech tree. GOES is an Earth observation satellite. It's an Earth observation satellite and it's appropriate for satellite imaging, but it is, I think, an American system solely. It is a NASA NOAA satellite. I'm, I feel certain that ESA must have something similar that uh, could go there and you could just re rename it. Um, the model might be different though. And uh, in my suggestions here are more for the future. They're gonna release the game, right? And then we have to look to the future and say, okay, well, how can we, I mean, flesh things out a little bit more? I mean, what are the improvements that could be made? And so I view this, you know, as suggestions for the future. Uh, Gemini, maybe, maybe uh, allowing Mercury there and uh, putting the Hermes thing here in Gemini might be better. That might be nice. Uh, here we have uh, Mer Mercury orbit, Venus orbit, Mars orbit. It's true, the Mariner probes uh, were, were sort of doing all things, including the Moon. But uh, I think SS-specific probes might be more interesting here. Um, there's, the phobos Grunt was a joint venture between ESA and Russia. So that could be good for Mars. And then we have a crude moon landing here, Apollo. Uh, well, this it, is not going to be in... Well, maybe eventually you could get an SS specific one there. Halo Comsat. I, I, and again, we can see though that uh, looking at the tech tree, it does tell us appropriate things for people to learn about and look at. So if you are interested in Jupiter or Saturn flybys, Voyager is certainly the thing that you want to search for. And if a young person was playing this game, uh, this would be a good thing for them to learn about, obviously. And for a space station, Skylab would be fair. I, I somewhat feel like ESA might pattern their space station off of the, the Soviet ones, actually, a little bit more. But also they could make modules using their... Um, MPLM. They had a permanent uh, module on the space station, uh, Leonardo, and you could conceive of a space station built out of those pieces since they're pressurized and human habitable. So uh, maybe a Leonardo PMM might be a basis for a space station uh, for the European side. Um, Vesta to explore Mars. There have been Mars probes. There was that one uh, poor little Mars, European Mars probe that uh, didn't quite make a landing. There, I've, uh, its name slips my mind right now. But there was one recently. When I say recently, in the past decade. Oh, they got Zarya here. So Zarya is the Russian one. Um, Zarya does, and it's ba it is the first module of the ISS. Interestingly, they've got the mass of Zarya right, but the mass of Skylab is two and a half times this, but I understand from a uh, playability uh, situation then that, 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 that would not be feasible because if you made it the right mass, there really is only one launcher that can launch it, um, and that would be uh, the Saturn V so, or N1 or something like that on that scale. So, yeah... Mm. It's, uh, yeah, might as well make it lighter. <laughs> uh, otherwise, you're going to be limiting people. And granted, I don't know about, but I'll have to look it up. 
uh, Unity is the next module on the ISS after Zarya. So here they're actually going through uh, uh, the core of the ISS here. Zvezda is the next module. But then uh, it stops there, apparently. Okay. This is all in the future and beyond our capabilities, so... Interesting tech tree. Uh, mission Grand Tour. Jupiter, Saturn, Ur uh, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. Technically, you don't have to do Pluto on the Grand Tour. Grand Tour was what Voyager did, but... Um, it's actually really, really hard to get an opportunity to go through uh, the four and Pluto. Uh, the Voyager opportunity, they, uh, there was a po possibility to go from Jupiter to Pluto, but you couldn't do Jupiter, Uranus, Sat uh, Saturn, uh, sorry, wrong order, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. That was not a possibility, and even then, that was a very rare rare situation. So that's the tech tree for ESSA uh, for the missions and the buildings I'm not going to talk about. Uh, so the rockets, Emerald, Topaz, these are good. Um, Ariane 1, uh, certainly the uh, upper stage and then Ariane. Uh, we seem to have lost our way here. <laughs> uh, we've, we've got a lot of American stages instead of the uh, stuff relating to Ariane 4, which would be a nice um, upgrade to Ariane 1. Yeah, but these, this is under contractors, so maybe they're contracting out to American rockets. And there hasn't been a European rocket that could match Saturn V, so we, it has to be introduced into this somehow. And if they have Saturn V, maybe they should just go with the full size of the uh, the um, the Skylab, but so so let's talk about the stages a little bit. Interestingly, what we don't have here is the the um, Europa rocket. We don't have the Europa rocket represented here. I think they're confining things to things that were actually done. But hypothetical systems like Hermes, uh, especially for space enthusiasts, might be interesting to see here. Uh, and instead of just the real rocket systems, though, confining it to real rocket systems, I mean, because it's sort of an alternate history anyway, having the hy hypothetical ones. Oh, there's Hermes, but it's got the whole launch stack instead of just the spacecraft. Well, if you're going to have the launcher, you've, it's got the little space plane on top of it. <laughs> the It's got the little space plane on top of it. So, uh, Able Stage, we could talk about this. Uh, we'll talk about these stages here. They're in the American Tech Tree as well, but let me just talk over what they are. And um, so the Jupiter stage is actually uh, what eventually got adapted to be the rocket that launches America's first satellite, um, Explorer 1. The Able Stage is the first restartable upper stage in the world. Uh, so it was able to restart in orbit, and its engine was so important, the AJ-10, that practically everything uh, uses a derivative or... I, I don't know, the, some of them, uh, some of the AJ-10s that eventually occur are barely similar to the one that actually was placed on ABLE, but the AJ-10 on ABLE eventually becomes the AJ-10 on Delta, but there's also an AJ-10 on the Apollo service module, AJ-10 uh, 190 is on the space as a space shuttle orbital maneuvering system engine, which is what completes its orbit and deorbits it. And so the AJ-10s are all over the place. In fact, the Orion service module also uses an AJ-10. So it's all derived from this Able stage way back when. The Scout stage, um, the Scouts I think are still being used there. Anyway, it's a solid rocket that launches little tiny satellites. And it was used for many decades. Uh, Jupiter upper stage related to the Jupiter lower stage. Again, America's first satellite kind of thing. Um, Ariane 1, definitely European. Many satellites launched with the early... Uh, Ariane 1, 2, 3, 4 are very similar. So, yeah, but uh, they are satellite launch vehicles. Atlas uh, was used to launch Mercury. And... Atlas in combination with the Centaur stage 
is was launched uh, was able to launch missions to the moon and eventually the advanced atlases and advanced centaurs launch missions to other planets and the current atlas the the booster is no longer related to this atlas but the centaur stage the current atlas that they launched these days atlas 5 the centaur stage is related to this centaur so um, the Delta booster is actually a Thor. Uh, it's not Delta. Delta is only the upper stage. Um, the booster is just a Thor. The reason why they've called the booster Delta is because Delta Rock, it's overall called the Delta Rocket. It's named after the upper stage. So they eventually called it the Delta Rocket, even though they retained the name Thor for the booster. It ultimately became a long tank Thor when they made it longer. And, uh, augmented when they put boosters on it and stuff like that but um, Delta 2 is ultimately derived from this and it was a very recent rocket that only a few years was it last year that it got retired um, so it's had a long long history 50 almost 60 year history I want to say uh, Star 37 is a little solid upper stage uh, it actually often got put on top of the Delta rocket and uh, that's for sending uh, payloads to higher orbits, like like other planets, uh, occasionally, but also to geosynchronous orbit. So that's that. And so I'm just going through, I'm talking about these stages. Delta K is just uh, for the development of the Delta Upper Stage. Delta Upper Stage is actually not that long. Um, it's actually a stubby little stage. But anyway, but uh, the thin ones are long, so maybe it's, uh, that's one of the thin ones. But the Delta K is a much more efficient version of the original Delta upper stage and was able to re restart more, was more reliable, altogether much better. The Agena stage is also restartable like the Delta stages. Uh, you could think of it as a competitor to Delta. Agena was used to launch probes to the moon and stuff like that as well. The Mariner probes, I want to say, were Atlas Agena, so Atlas uh, and Agena. Atlas was never used with a Delta upper stage, I don't think. Uh, it was used with Able, but not with much success. So Atlas Able happened. Um, Thor Delta happened. Uh, Thor Agena happened. That was used for spy satellites. Atlas Agena definitely happened for some probes. And uh, Titan Agena happened. Uh, Titan Delta did not, I don't think. That, so th I don't think that was mixed. Uh, Titan Centaur did happen. So that is a combination in real life. And Titan Centaur with two SRBs happen. Uh, Titan Centaur with four SRBs did not happen, though you could dream. Um, and actually, uh, four SRBs don't happen for a very long time. Three SRBs happen. Uh, Delta with uh, Delta upper stage with three SRBs happens, Delta, I mean the Thor stage with a Delta and six and nine SRBs happen. Eight SRBs, I don't think anything has ever had eight SRBs. I might be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't recall any rocket having eight, eight SRBs. <laughs> it's uh, two, three, four happen, five happen, Six happened, nine happened, and that's it. But I might be mistaking something, but uh, I, I believe so. Uh, so Saturn V booster, um, it's not really called the Saturn V, that's the S1C. They've got a Saturn II here, which would be the S2 stage, I suppose. Otherwise, I don't know what the Saturn II is. Uh, so the real Saturn V was a S1C stage plus a Saturn uh, S2 stage plus a S4B stage. So these three put together. Maybe the Saturn II represents both the S2 plus the S4B stage. Uh, I think what they mean for us to do is the Saturn V goes with the Saturn II, which also has the S4B, and the uh, Saturn 1B combines with the Saturn S4B stage. So that's a combination and that's a combination. But they don't have a DCSS. Oh, they do have a DCSS here. So technically Delta IV goes with this one here. 
Uh, Titan 3, of course, goes with Centaur. Uh, Atlas can go with Centaur. Athena is an interesting upper stage. Um, don't know what to say about that one. And more Titan boosters. So these are... It, it doesn't say SRB here. Even though they are SRBs. These are two SRBs that are attached to that. So really significantly improves the payload capacity. And these are the boosters for Delta 4 to make it a Delta 4 heavy. Okay. And so these... This is like the American block, <laughs> except uh, I don't know about Athena, actually. Uh, Ariane 5, booster, and uh, Ariane 5 SRBs, it doesn't... Oh, here are the SRBs, so technically you have to take this, combine it with those, and add the Ariane 5 upper stage. And that's a system that's on par with Titan, with its two boosters, if you use a... Uh, Centaur upper stage, so approximately the same thing actually. I could have just done Ariane, but it's nice to have choices. It's nice to have choices. And uh, it's also approximately the same as a Delta 4, not quite as strong as a Delta 4 heavy. If you use Delta 4 with SRBs, Ariane 5 is about the same. So you've got three very similar systems here Titan, Delta 4, and Ariane 5. Delta 4 should not in any way be confused with Del the original Delta. The original Delta is a tiny little rocket. Now, size wise, I mean, I don't know if they've got it like that here, but it, it seems more or less. Uh, Delta is the tiny one. It actually should use a small launch pad, probably. Uh, Atlas is larger uh, than Titan, then. Uh, and Titan is on par with uh, Delta and Ariane 5. Though. Titan without the boosters is probably, it's actually fairly light. It's about the same as Atlas. And then we've got the Saturn stuff. Those are big. The Saturn 1B has a large. Saturn 5, well, I mean, I guess at one point they did launch them off of the same pad, so I'll leave that be. Okay, so, and then we have Ariane 6, which is a future system that's going to be coming up. And the Ariane 6 boosters, very good. And then SLS, I guess they'll contract out for those. Uh, they've got SLS uh, Block 1B upper stage, which is the bigger upper stage, so that's nice. Capacities make sense. All right, so that looks like a very nice tech tree. Um, it's got some distinctive European stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's pretty good. Let me, because uh, I wasn't able to see the later eras on the other tech trees, so let's go down the list. So is the American one really that different? So we see Explorer Probe, so that's different. Um, we got the same Eden thing. I guess we'll pass on that, because they, they just ultimately used Mercury, but they launched uh, animals into space other ways. <laughs> Strapping them onto an Atlas rocket. But anyway, um, so this part looks similar. Gemini is the same. And again, it might be more interesting to have two possibilities here because the more possibilities, the more variations it might be helpful to have. So a Gemini plus a dinosaur. That's D-Y-N-A-S-O-A-R, by the way. Um, Mariner is one thing. I mean, Mariner really dominated, so I'll leave that be. If anybody's going to look up something, let be Mariner. Apollo is Apollo. Uh... You could have a lunar Gemini thing. Uh, that was hypo hypothetical, so. Uh, Pioneer Probe. Uh, it's, it might be interesting to have both a Pioneer or a Voyager uh, as choices. Viking Lander for Mars is right. Skylab is certainly the first space station here. Um, and America did uh, go through the same ISS trick. So, Galileo Probe certainly for Jupiter. Uh, maybe Cassini would be nice for a Saturn thing. A Hubble Space Telescope is good. Uh, Chandra X-ray Observatory, yep. Yeah. So, we've got a Curiosity that's different from the ESA tree, right? Uh, they had something different in that slot. And we've got an Orion, so a different ultimate capsule. So, that's... Pretty nice, and so there's the path to Mars here. 
let's take a look at the vehicles. Vanguard, that's different from the other tech tree and Viking. And uh, but here we get to more similar things, except for redstone was different. The booster redstone, a uh, redstone is a derivative of the Jupiter system, and Vanguard uh, was actually combined with Able initially. So this is a proper rocket here, Vanguard and Able. Well, th those were fun times. They didn't actually have the probe that goes with it. I don't know if there's any point uh, at this f to have two options here, but it, you could have Explorer and Vanguard. The only reason you would want to have Vanguard is it's still in orbit. Uh, it is the oldest uh, object in orbit that we have uh, as a species that we put up there. So it's still there. It'll be there for another 400 years. So Vanguard won. And, uh, yep, everything the same here, same idea with the Genas and all that business, and the Saturns, and, uh, they never get down, well, Atlas 3 is the precursor to Atlas 5, though maybe it'd be better just to go straight to Atlas 5 here, since it's so much more famous, and just call that Atlas 5, it's basically the same booster anyway. They've got the space shuttle here. Uh, which is interesting because they don't have the space shuttle as a human in space option. Multi-crew orbit, um, orbital EVA, Apollo. Yeah, so I don't know how that works. Maybe we'd have to uh, try that out and see if we can get to the shuttle and see how it actually works, whether we can put crew on it or not without using another pod, uh, but hopefully. Uh, so, and then we have SLS, none of the Ariane stuff here, of course, uh, and uh, so yes, this is uh, very straightforward, exactly as it would be American Tech Tree. Um, I, and uh, these are things people would look for throughout these eras, so. Oh, there's, uh, there's Atlas V, then the, we have it there. So we actually have Atlas Three and Atlas V. I wonder how it plays out, whether it's worthwhile to upgrade, because this has a capacity of 30.8 tons, this has a capacity of 32. Mm, that's something to check out uh, during actual gameplay. So, but again, I'm just going through the tech trees and commenting on the hardware that is included in the game. So, the Soviet Union. As expected, the first satellite is Sputnik, Luna is right, uh, Sputnik 2 is the first that carried animals into space. Vostok is uh, what we would want. Interesting, Cosmos 419 out of all things. Huh. I've, there's also a Zon that was sent to Mars, but the, 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 the Mars probes for, for the Soviets were called Mars. <laughs> um, so, so, Cosmos 419 and I guess this is why I didn't know about it. It was a failed Soviet spacecraft intended to visit Mars. It, it's interesting to highlight that over over the other missions, um, both, v both Venus missions. I mean, I'm sure under here we've got Venera 9, yeah. But the earlier Venera missions could have worked there. They're very similar, actually. But... Um, could try a Zon 2. That was sent to Mars. It failed as well, but... It at least got a proper name. Cosmos, they only leave it as Cosmos if it failed badly. So Cosmos 419 actually failed on launch. It never left low Earth orbit. Um, the booster stage burn timer was set incorrectly, apparently. So that's a little bit sad. Zon 2 um, actually got uh, to on its path to Mars. It just lost communication. So it might have actually pa passed by Mars, even. And again, the other Mars probes uh, tend to be called Mars. It was Mars 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Not particularly successful overall, I have to admit. So, yeah. Uh, Vosca, though Mars 4 actually... No, that, that wasn't... Uh, there was one that actually managed to land. Mars 2 uh, worked well for 362 orbits. Mm, Mars 3 lander landed on Mars. It was the first lander on Mars. So Mars 3 probably should be mentioned. Anyway, uh, Voskhod was a multi-crew mission. Um, 
And we have a Soyuz, so that's okay. Now, Comsat, uh, a Molnia satellite would be nice. Molnia, Molnia, probably, is how it's uh, well, closer to how it's pronounced. So, maybe just calling this, well, it doesn't look like a Molnia, so maybe. Sokovsky, that one I haven't heard of, actually. Um, Vesta, Mars Lander, I don't know if maybe uh, Phobos, I mean, there was, um, the Phobos Grun Phobos was actually a Phobos Lander, so that could be a good thing to have there. Salyut, certainly, that's uh, DOS 7, come on, uh, this, this modular space station uh, tree is different, this is the, the Mir uh, sequence, so that's nice, that's worth a while. Solkovsky 2, and uh, we've got a different uh, X-ray telescope. Marzakod. Oh, that's so. That's like uh, one. Of, uh, that's like the Mars Three rover. Was it Mars Three that had the rover? Uh, one of them had a rover. So that might be something like that. They don't. They don't actually have a Luna Cod. Huh? That's pretty. I mean, there's certainly a lot of uh, Soviet slash Russian distinctive hardware here. Uh, especially like I wasn't able to see this before with the mirror, mirror line. So that's worthwhile. Okay, China. Well, this one might be difficult. <laughs> uh, everything's called Long March. Um, let's see. I'm, I I might actually learn about stuff this way. Yeah, I mean, I had not heard of Dongfang Hong at all, so that's a start. Dongfang Hong is in fact the first satellite of the People's Republic of China, launched in 1970, so that is legit. Luna and Sputnik, um, well, what can, I don't actually know what probe they sent animals in space with, probably just the main spacecraft, so, but I have not heard of this one, Shu Guang. Let me take a look. But this is sort of what I hope people will experience with the game in that they're gonna learn about the systems. Gameplay, um, we'll, we'll have to go through and see. So, uh, Shu Guang means Dong, Dawn, Dawn, and first crewed spacecraft proposed by uh, China. So that's, so these are hypothetical things. So that's good. Uh, Yingguo. Actually, this is much better than I thought it would be uh, for the Chinese tree. Shenzhou is uh, what they have. Tiangong for the space station. So this is... Uh, um, it's a lot of Solkovsky and uh, Vesta here. But there genuinely aren't many... Actually, the United States is the only one that has gone to... I mean, the I think ESA participated as well. But... Uh, and had some probes to the outer planets, but the Soviets do not, did not go to the outer planets as far as I know, and China has not either, so. And yes, this uh, Jun Tian, I suppose, is a uh, Chinese space telescope. It is planned. It has not actually been launched. So that's a planned space telescope, Tianwen. Insight, interesting. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So this is a Chinese thing. It is it's known as Insight, but I don't know if that's... I mean, that's the translation of the Chinese name. That's not the actual Chinese name, I don't think. Uh, well, it's an English word. But it's a, um, its fuller name is Hard X-Ray Modulation Telescope, or HXMT. So that's what that is. Uh, confusing when there's another thing called Insight. But, all right, so that that is a real Chinese thing. All right. Uh, and here we have uh, a Chinese advanced spacecraft. So that's good. All right. So we've got, uh, we've got some distinctively Chinese things in this tech tree that are worth looking up and learning about and actually probably should be made for realism overhaul in the uh, Kerbal Space Program. Actually, uh, this is a good thing. I'm learning about satellites that we don't we don't have available in Kerbal Space Program uh, to the best of my knowledge so might be things to model I do wish they had uh, India which has been doing some significant space missions I don't see why not 
why India would be excluded when it's, you know, sent a lunar lander out, has uh, a Mars orbiter and, uh, and a lunar orbiter, and has a planned crewed mission. So, Osumi, yeah, that is familiar. Hiten, I don't know about, so that's interesting. Uh, it ha yeah, it uh, released a small orbiter called Hagoromo, which is uh, which made it into lunar orbit. So that's legit. We got a lot of these this Eden thing for animal in space. That's fine. Mercury. Um, hmm. Well, uh, I'd pass on that. Sakigake, I have not heard of. So, again, learning about stuff. Pathfinder. Oh, okay, so that's Pathfinder in, Eng uh, in English. That would be Pathfinder. Uh, or Pioneer. Uh, first interplanetary spacecraft for the Japanese. And the first deep space probe to be launched by any country other than US or Soviet Union, according to Wikipedia. Uh, so, it... Oh, it was the Halley Comet uh, flyby. Okay, yes, I know about that then. I didn't know its name, but the, uh, during the Halley Comet flyby, uh, when when it came about the previous time, everybody tried to launch stuff to it. Uh, the U.S. actually sort of missed out because of Challenger. One of the things that they were rushed about with Challenger was they were trying to get the Halley mission uh, launched uh, afterwards. It, uh, Challenger wasn't the Halley mission. Uh, the Halley mission was supposed to go on one of the subsequent space shuttle missions um but yep that did not work out uh so gemini i guess uh that, that i mean there's no there I, i've heard of plans for uh japanese spa uh, crewed spacecraft but i don't have anything definite on that nozomi was a mars orbiter it didn't actually reach mars Though, uh, Bepi Colombo might fit here too, because uh, uh, it's uh, headed to Mercury orbit. Uh, uh, the, um, the Japanese have a little probe on Bepi Colombo called Mio, and so that that would be part of this. Apollo again. Uh, well, the Japanese sector was always going to be the hardest one. Oh, we didn't take a look at the Chinese launch vehicles or the Soviet launch vehicles. We let, I'll go back and do that. Um, Voyager, Vesta. So yeah, this is probably the thinnest one in terms of distinctively Japanese payloads. But I suppose that's to be expected. But uh, uh, one thing that they could do probably is instead of something like Voyager... What, what one thing they don't have is asteroid stuff. Yeah, I mean, there isn't really a asteroid intercept thing. So maybe you just have in place of Jupiter or Saturn flyby or one of these, maybe a Hayabusa. It'd make the Japanese really happy if you put in Hayabusa. Um, that would be good. Um, having one of the modules for the space station be HTV might not be a bad idea. So those are possibilities. I'm pretty sure they have their own space telescope, or tried to. There's at least a attempted space telescope. But I forget the name. Vehicles. Lambda 4S. Well, I was looking for that. So that's very good. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> um, so Lambda 4S. I'm happy to see that there. Uh, it is, I think, the smallest uh, orbital rocket around. So... Uh, I think it's smaller than than Vanguard. Vanguard was otherwise the smallest, as far as I know, in terms of mass. And otherwise, a lot of American stages, but Mu, uh, the Mu stuff, those that's legit. And... Um, you know, they add the Delta, Delta stuff here. You could just have an H1, uh, or N1. The, the Japanese rocket was N1. It's basically a, a copy off of Delta. It was licensed. They licensed the Delta stuff, and they turned it into N1. So that's a possibility. And uh, H1 was a fur development. There's a Hope vehicle. I guess, okay, so I, I'm seeing a trend here. So Hermes and Hope and this stuff, the, they're in the place of the space shuttle. So I guess these are 
all the same sort of reusable space shuttle things and maybe they carry crew because they're all in the same place i wonder if the did they have Buran in the soviet one we didn't actually check the launch vehicle so maybe Buran is there too so h2a yeah that's good um basically uh taking the place of a ariane h2b may be on there uh maybe a good thing to have here um that's more useful it's heavier uh and if they have ariane 6 they should have h3 h3 is the basically if you think of h2 as the ariane 5 the japanese have a h3 coming up that's the equivalent of an ariane 6 so that might be nice Okay, let's uh, go back and take a look at the launchers for the other tech trees, which I missed. Okay, so Long March 1. Well, what can I do? Uh, There's going to be a lot of Long Marches. There's Long March 2 here. Um, Long March 2, uh, they use for launching crew. So it, it seems to be placed in the Atlas location. So that makes sense to me. Um... And they supplement with boosters. That happens. That's for for the one that they use for Shenzhou. They have the boosters. And Long March 3 is a heavier rocket. Interesting they have Proton there. It's not entirely impossible. Divine Dragon. Well, dear me. <laughs> I don't know if they've got that even planned. That would be interesting. Let me see. Shenlong. Okay. Yeah, alright. That is Divine Dragon. Uh, is a Chinese reusable robotic space plane currently in development? Okay, so that's legit. Um, and in Long March 5, and in Long March 9. So uh, th there's a fair number of rockets here. DC, uh, uh, some of these, the, the American parts don't necessarily need to be here. All, you could just rename them like some variant of the Long March 3 and it'll be all right. So there's like Long March 3B and... Uh, like Long March 5, there's uh, 5B5C. It's just sort of disorienting to see the ABLE stage in this tech tree uh, and stuff like that. Uh, I'm worried that as far as an educational thing goes, it might be confusing. Maybe people might think that uh, everybody actually used ABLE stages and Delta stages, which is obviously not the case, um, or N1 boosters. Okay, speaking of which, let's go to the Soviet uh, launch tree. So, if it's going to be an educational thing, I'm just... Uh, I, I can see the gameplay reason for having those in the tech tree. I'm just worried about what kind of mes message it sends educationally, that's all. So, vehicles. And there is absolutely no reason for the Soviet tech tree... Oh, at least they have Block D there. Um, for the Soviet tech tree to have able Jupiter, and they, they have plenty of their own stages. <laughs> they, uh, and they're not hard to model either. Um, uh, before block D, which is a very sophisticated stage, uh, there should be block E and block I. Those are uh, things that they had. And on this side, the Cosmos 2 upper stage and Cosmos 3 upper stage are both uh, uh, good, and then you can have the Cosmos, uh, and they have a Cyclone here. Cosmos 2 and Cosmos 3 lower stages might be useful. Um, they're roughly equivalent to Algol and Jupiter. I don't actually know why you would want an Algol or Jupiter when you have the R7 rocket, but... Um, yeah, so, and uh, if you want another... Uh, I guess you could have the Cosmos 2 here and Cosmos 3 here. You could have the Cyclone 2 and Cyclone 3 here. Something like that, and then their respective upper stages, they exist. Centaur uh, would be difficult to replace. They have a KVTK stage that was supposed to go on the on the Angara Five that would serve the same purpose. And L three is a good replacement for uh, the S four B. Actually, <laughs> it's, it's it's actually. Um, I just don't ever want to see the Saturn in this tech tree because uh, one one other rocket you can have here is the UR-700. I think Soviet space enthusiasts will like to see that as an option. And the Saturn-1B was act is actually the equivalent of the Proton rocket, which is here. Uh, so those are equivalent rockets. And oh, we do have Buran. 
So that we have. And we have a Zenit. So the Zenit is derived from the Energia rocket. Having uh, Energia here, a light Energia as an option or something like that, uh, these proposed kinds of things might fill this out without having the American stuff in. Um, but yeah, they, they actually have the specific engine names here for the Zenit uh, booster and upper stage. Previously, they had just put the stage name. They didn't like write AJ-10 there or anything like that. Uh, here, uh, in this particular case, they're very much more specific uh, about what the stages are. That's interesting. Uh, Yenisei, I've never heard of. Oh, it's that Soyuz 5 thing. Oh, okay. Well, I, I guess uh, that has to be allowed. <laughs> Angara is another option. In fact, Angara could go here instead of the, like, Titan. Well, it's a derivative of Buran, so... It could uh, replace Titan IV here. And um, then again, we can get rid of DCSS with KVTK. But yeah, uh, at the very least, I would like the Soviet tech tree to not have American parts. <laughs> again, these things, the, the stages are all tubes. <laughs> so uh, they're tubes with a little black nozzle at the end. It shouldn't be too hard to model them. Anyway. So, I don't know if this has been completely boring or not. Uh, I just thought that I would talk about the parts that were included in the game. Uh, obviously, each tree has some specific parts. Some trees are harder to diversify than others, like the Japanese one. Heck, in real life, the Japanese did borrow uh, some rocket parts initially from uh, the American space program. So, yeah, but uh, I think... Filling that out with more unique parts will make it more interesting for replayability. And I'll look forward to eventually getting to the space shuttle at least, uh, and hopefully to Mars missions in future videos in Mars Horizon. But for now, I'll leave it at this discussion covering the topic that I know most about, I feel. I mean, not that I know a lot about it. There are people who know more about this hardware than I do. Oh god, there was no Falcon 9, was there? Um, <laughs> I just realized something. Yeah, there's no Falcon 9. <laughs> I don't know, maybe that's a uh, licensing sort of thing. But then Atlas V is here, so... I don't know. Um, Atlas V is still an active launcher at the moment. A Vulcan is not here either, which is a future system, New Glenn. But of course we don't want to flood the thing. The supplementary 2x Atlas Vs is... <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Atlas V Heavy is not gonna happen. Anyway, uh, maybe uh, have Atlas V here and have Falcon 9 down here would be my best suggestion. It, it seems a shame not to have it, since it's probably the most popular rocket at the moment. Anyway, yeah. So those are my thoughts about the tech trees in the game. That's all I wanted to cover here. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.